the heading styles in Word can be very useful for a number of, of reasons. One of those is the building a table of contents, and another, in my opinion, is just navigating your own document. I prefer usually to use the heading one, heading two, and heading three styles in Microsoft Word. Uh, these are just built-in headings that work very seamlessly with uh, the table of contents functions without having to define those on your own. So I'll use those and show how these are applied in this this report that was created. So this report was created using these headings. So if we go to the view ribbon and click on the navigation pane, because I defined things as heading one, so we see everything to the far left are are heading one. So these are most important headings. So those are the introduction, the literature review, structural data, collision data, findings, conclusions, references, and then underneath each of those there are some subheadings. So we have heading two are this next level, so this is the 1.1 and the 1.2. And then finally, we have some heading three. So under the structural data heading one, under the results section for heading two, which was 4.2, we have a few subsections there, which are the heading three. And so we can see that hierarchy as it flows down from heading one to heading two to heading three. And so the nice thing about having this navigation, if I'm editing this document, I can click any of these and go jump straight to uh, these sections. So it's somewhat easier and so if we zoom in a little bit it will take us uh, directly to uh, those sections of the report. So it's, it's nice in terms of actually creating your document to have these uh, subheadings and headings built into your document. So now let's take a look at how we actually can create these headings. So I'll go back to the introduction and let's assume that we didn't have this here but we wanted to input the heading introduction. So we would type in the word introduction, or we could have already had it there. We select that word and just click on heading one, and then we're going to have our heading one style. And we'll see that it popped up in our navigation pane here. Now you might decide that you want to change uh, some things about this. Say if you wanted a different color for the, for the text here, or maybe a different font, you can do that. And the nice thing about using these heading styles is you can right click on your heading style and click update heading one to match the selection and now all of your other heading ones will show up in this format and we actually since heading two is based on heading one that color uh, filtered down to our heading two as well but we could change that and and just heading two if we wanted to if we wanted that to be uh, maybe purple we can update that and now every heading two will match that format. So that's a nice way to change all at once without having to go through individually and change those headings. So we see in the navigation pane we see now how to create these headings. If we wanted to change something from a heading two to a heading three or maybe we wanted to make that a heading one we could do that as well. So it's just it's as easy as just clicking on these different heading styles to change those uh, to the different different levels. And we see that it automatically updates our navigation pane on the left side of the screen here. So that's the way we can apply these headings. And, and to me, it's much easier to do this from the beginning. So if you know from the beginning of your document you're going to have a lengthy report and you want to use these headings, do this from the beginning, set it up from the beginning, and every time you create a heading or a subheading, make sure you define it using the styles in Word. And then now the final thing we want to do is we want to create a table of contents. We already have this set up as a heading. We know that we want a table of contents, but we want to create the content for this table of contents. So since we've used these heading styles that Word provides us, we can go to references, our references ribbon, and insert a table of contents. You can use one of their built-in tables, which is usually fine. I already have the term table of contents, so I'm going to select create a custom table of contents. 
this is where if you use different headings, you would need to modify the table of contents that Word is going to provide. Since we use the standard heading one, heading two, heading three, uh, we're, we're not going to need to modify this at all. And if we just click OK, now we have our table of contents. So using your heading, your heading styles, it's as simple as just inserting the table of contents to create uh, this final part of your report, uh, which can be a very frustrating part if you're doing this manually. And just to see how this would change things. If we go down to the literature review, we see it's on page five. So let's go and add a couple of pages here. So just a couple of blank pages. Now we have the literature review on page eight. So if we go back to our table of contents, we're going to right click and go to update filled. And now we should see our literature review being updated as starting on page eight. So that's how we generate a table of contents and then update it if we've made changes in our document. So again, using the heading styles in Word is a really handy way to both navigate your document as you're creating it and then to create a table of contents when you're finished with your report. Or you can create the table of contents at any point along the way and update it as needed.